stall occurs when an aircraft's airfoils, or wings, exceed their critical angle of attack, resulting in the reduction of lift. This video focuses on power-on stalls, which simulate a stall during takeoff. Pilots practice stalls so they can recognize the indications of an imminent or full stall during a power-on situation and how to make prompt, positive recoveries with minimum loss of altitude while maintaining coordinated flight. Before learning how to conduct power-on stalls, let's first examine what a stall is. The definition of a stall is when an airfoil's critical angle of attack is exceeded. An airplane generates lift with its airfoils. The pilot increases and decreases the airfoil's angle of attack to climb, descend, or remain in level flight. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line, an imaginary straight line between the leading edge and the trailing edge of an airfoil, and the relative wind, the direction of movement of the air relative to an airfoil. It is the opposite direction of movement of the flight path. As a pilot increases the angle of attack, the airfoil will increasingly generate lift until the critical angle of attack is exceeded. The air flowing over the upper chamber of the wing begins to separate, causing the wing to stop generating lift and stall. To recover from a stall, the pilot must reduce the airfoil's angle of attack below the critical angle of attack so it will generate lift once again. An example of how a pilot may experience a power-on stall situation is if they were taking off on a short runway with obstacles at the end of the runway, such as trees. As the pilot rotates and the aircraft lifts off, the pilot may feel that the obstacles are very close and that the aircraft will not clear the obstacles, so they excessively increase the pitch of their climb, causing the airplane to stall while near the runway surface and obstacles. The pilot will need to initiate a prompt recovery from the stall and then climb away from the runway surface and obstacles to safety. First, perform the before maneuver checklist and select an altitude that would allow recovery no lower than 1500 feet AGL per the FAA Airman Certification Standards. Epic Flight Academy students must choose an altitude that will allow recovery from stalls above 2000 feet AGL. As the clearing turns are completed, reduce the power to 1500 RPMs and smoothly increase pitch to maintain a designated altitude as airspeed decreases. Maintain heading and altitude as the airspeed decreases. It is helpful to choose a visual aiming point, as well as bug the heading and altitude on the PFD for reference. As the nose is raised and forward visibility is reduced, the pilot's eyes need to move 45 degrees to the left, between the instrument panel and window frame. Pick a reference point and keep that point in one place with the rudder unless making a turning stall. If the object moves right, more right rudder input is needed. If the object moves left, less right rudder input is needed. As airspeed approaches normal liftoff speed, about 55 knots indicated airspeed, the pilot smoothly applies full power when smoothly increasing the pitch using elevator back pressure. The pilot should leave their right hand on the throttle and continue to adjust rudder input accordingly to keep their side visual point in the same area on the windscreen. As airspeed decreases, more rudder input is needed. If the stall is being conducted while turning, establish a bank angle of no more than 20 degrees in the desired turn direction. As the aircraft's angle of attack increases, the plane will begin to stall. The pilot will feel the aircraft begin to buffet, or shake, which is caused by the separation of the airflow over the airfoils, while the control effectiveness will rapidly decay, which means control inputs will not be as effective as normal. The pilot should then call out stalling and initiate the stall recovery. The aircraft will experience one of the following stalls. If an imminent stall occurs, one of the wings of the aircraft stalls before the other, and the aircraft will bank to the side of the stalled wing. Since the wings are stalled, the aileron control effectiveness is less, so the pilot must respond to the unwanted banking by applying the opposite rudder to bring the aircraft out of the bank. If a full stall occurs, a sudden loss of control effectiveness occurs. Excessive sink rate or sudden nose pitch down with the full up elevator is experienced. To recover from the stall, the pilot must promptly and simultaneously verify the throttle is fully in, decrease the angle of attack by lowering the nose, and level the wings using the rudders, if appropriate. The sight picture used for stall recovery is when the aircraft's nose is brought equal or slightly lower than the horizon. Immediately after the stall is stopped, the pilot must establish a pitch attitude for a controlled climb to minimize altitude loss and establish a positive rate of climb. Remember, a power-on stall is simulating a stall shortly after takeoff. 
when the aircraft is close to the ground. When a positive rate of climb has been established, slightly lower the nose of the aircraft and accelerate to VX if simulating obstacles at the end of a runway, or VY without simulated obstacle. Lastly, level off at the assigned or desired altitude and resume a normal cruise speed by adjusting the power accordingly. Some helpful tips when conducting power on stalls are, clear the area and appropriately set the power for the stall by conducting the before maneuver checklist. Ensure the starting altitude allows for a recovery above 1500 feet AGL. Epic Flight Academy students must choose an altitude that will allow a recovery from stalls above 2000 feet AGL. Maintain the starting altitude when slowing the aircraft down to 55 knots by increasing elevator back pressure. In a straight stall, choose an outside reference roughly 45 degrees to the left of the corner of the windscreen that is far enough away that it will be visible throughout the entire maneuver. Smoothly apply full power and increase right rudder to remain coordinated in the stall. As the pitch is increased and becomes a positive angle of attack, right rudder is required to compensate for P-factor. Smoothly pitch up instead of quickly pulling the elevator back and keep the elevator back pressure in until the stall occurs. If conducting a turning stall, keep the same bank angle until the stall occurs. Use the rudders and reference point if conducting a straight stall to remain coordinated and to keep the wings level as the stall occurs. React to the stall quickly but smoothly and methodically. Do not quickly apply back elevator input during the stall recovery to avoid a secondary stall. Right after the stall recovery, begin a climb simulating coming away from the ground. Set the power for cruise after climbing, trim the aircraft, and maintain the desired altitude at cruise speed. Remain situationally aware throughout the entire power on stall maneuver by looking outside and referencing the horizon. When being evaluated by a progress check pilot or designated practical examiner when conducting power on stalls, the pilot must remain above 1500 feet AGL throughout the entire maneuver, maintain a specified heading plus or minus 10 degrees if in straight flight, maintain a specified angle of bank, if conducting a turning stall, no greater than 20 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees if in turning flight while inducing the stall. Acknowledge cues of the impending stall. For private pilots, recover promptly after a full stall occurs. For commercial pilots, recover at the first indication of a stall or after a full stall has occurred as specified by the evaluator. Climb out of the stall and accelerate to VX if simulating obstacles or VY if no obstacles are simulated. Return to the altitude, heading, and airspeed specified by the evaluator. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.